good afternoon. I'll go ahead and call the uh, March 16, 2023 Oconee Fire Service Advisory Commission meeting to order. Um, before we move into the approval of minutes, I'd like to amend the agenda. We need to add uh, discussion of secretary appointment and uh, add um, discussion or appointment of liaison uh, from the fire commission to the fire chiefs association. I'll make a motion that we do that. Second. Second. Any questions or discussion? We can add that under at the very end under my report. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? There is none. We'll move those two uh, amended items, and I'll explain those uh, at the end. Um, more or less, they're just housekeeping for us. Nothing. Huge. All right, we'll move on into the approval of the minutes. Are they, uh, everybody had a chance to review the minutes that was sent out? Make mm -hmm. motion to accept. Motion to accept. Second. Second. Any amendments, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Lot signed. There is none. The minutes are approved. Okay, radio communications report. No meeting last month, sir. Okay. All right, Director Crime, we'll move into yours. Okay, uh, last month uh, the question was brought up about cancellation of active 911 after calls for some departments and those kind of things. Um, so after discussion to have it automatically come out of dispatch, um, when it cancels the call, when the call is canceled, it could happen that way. But... If the call is still active, if there's an officer on scene, if there's a department on scene, but your department is not on scene, um, it can't because it, to, to, to actually send it out, it, you would have to close the call. And that's, that's basically how, um, so unfortunately, the ones that do have those go out. A lot of times special rescue and dive have a cancellation call go out. That's because uh, Steve here's it, here's the cancellation, and actually goes in and sends an alert to their membership. Um, so a person physically um, from that department would be sending that out. And at this time, uh, you know, we're not at a point to have dispatch go into not active other than automatic. Um, so that's really not, um, you know, an option right now for, uh, as a wide scale where everyone gets that canceled call when it when it goes when it happens uh, so I wanted to get back with you on that um, discussion wildland strike team so uh, in the past we have had volunteers and paid staff um, on, a, on the states forestries um, a Coney wildland strike team uh, so with some partnerships and some grant money we have a new trailer for that group um, some new equipment uh, you know um, if if you know about that team uh, we lost a lot of our equipment at Pinnacle Mountain, um, and so we've been able to replace most of that. We're almost done with the upfit. We still do have to get markings and stuff on that trailer um, as we move forward. But um, the main thing is, is, is want to make sure as as we push this out, what we've noticed, and, and it's a very inactive team, but when we need it, we need it. Um, that a, a lot of the the membership has fallen off and it really became just paid staff um, that we're doing the walk and doing the refresher and doing that. And we just want to re uh, reiterate that is for everyone. You're going to see a walk information come out. Um, you're going to see some, some training information. Uh, you do have to have four uh, wildland forestry classes. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do that. The uh, um, S1, um, uh, S130, S190, um, and then also, there's a fire academy class um, that is, is also the same uh, through that. Um, Brady would know the, know the numbers exactly. Um, but my point being, if you could just bring it up, uh, make sure people know and, and, and know that that's coming to your, you know, to your uh, areas um, as we push that out and, and get those, um, the walk um, on the schedule. And then if any classes, uh, we can, we're going to try to get a couple classes. We have a bunch of new people that need it also but we need to be able to fill those classes as they come out. Um, our, our risk um, 
goes up and down. Uh, really, our risk is just as bad in the fall as, you know, out west, it's, it's late summer uh, when everything's dried up completely. But, um, you know, you can see by all the burns that they're doing right now, it's good burning season. And so it, that means things can, can burn easily. We've had uh, multiple different smaller ones recently. So just wanted to bring that up, a good opportunity to, to be a part of, of the whole regional side of that. Um, if they want to, and we'll be getting more information, uh, sending it out via active and those things when we get those set with the state and, and those kind of things. Um, discussion regarding opioid um, program. So, uh, you know, the, the money the council is getting for opioids and those kind of things is, is going to be working on making sure that access to um, Narcan is, is available to everyone. Um, you know, part of that is going to be through training, a uh, program for replacement and all of those kind of things. So we originally started as a role program uh, where, you know, any fire department can do that uh, um, a good many years ago. And that program for us as on the county side dropped away because we were a EMT and we fell under our own standing orders. And up until recently, DHEC said, well, you're, you're under this program. You can't be under the role program. So they now, um, we, we haven't actually got the process. Um, uh, we did identify that they will let us now be part of that program. Um, it, it, it basically, um, opens up the opportunity for more Narcan and an easier standing order process for every department um, to, to, to work through to try to get Narcan out to basically every firefighter, every rescuer in the system. Uh, we're still working with DHEC to actually go through that transition um, uh, to make sure that we are compliant with the role program and Mike is working on that. Um, and we'll be, you know, trying to get that out to where we can push that out to more people um, to, to fulfill some of the stuff that the opioid um, task force and, and group, as, as that money comes in, uh, is trying to do to make it readily available um, out there. Uh, it, it, is an, it is an amazing um, drug if you've ever seen it work on, on an overdose patient um, that it, it, it is for. Um, the issue is its early, early application. And we know that so often in a medical call, the sooner you are, the sooner we're there. Um, one of the, you know, CPR, and, um, you know, it, knowing what to do is important. Um, and pushing those classes out is also part of that program to try to help um, do layperson CPR um, and all of that. And also, you know, teach others um, to, to early awareness of what, um, opioid overdose or even just cardiac arrest looks like because so often um, it can be reversed if it's caught early. So um, that program is, is underway. Uh, we had some questions on the role program and so we are pursuing that even though we are an, uh, an EMT program that falls under for EMTs already can give it but this way any you know anyone with the training will be allowed to once we uh, get that program transitioned. Uh, we had a request. Um, I, I delivered a packet to you um, for some of the job descriptions. Um, uh, a lot of these have changed over time and will continue to change um, as classes are available, needs are available, what we see. Uh, Chief can speak about this some um, also, but as we identify um, the need for the county, um, those classes that are needed and those things for a job description may change a little bit. And also as we try to build some, some stair step ability into our program so that when you come in, you're not always a firefighter. You come in and you get more training, you can actually step up to more, you know, a firefighter to um, a fire specialist and a, a, an actual um, engineer and those kind of things as we build those out. Um, but these are uh, what is actually in the computer for hiring. So when we go to hire a position, um, this is uh, the, um, what the person actually sees um, is where this came from. Uh, um, and that is our official out to the public. Um, we do have other training uh, 
schematics, you may say, to, to try to guide people's training to get them further in their career, um, to better, better them as a firefighter, but to continue their education uh, as we move forward. And she's been working on a lot of that to, to try to, to give our, our firefighters a path, a path to, to better themselves, to, to better our department um, with trained personnel. We all know that training uh, sometimes is, re is redundant, but other times it can be that one little thing that changes the difference in them going home the next day because they recognized uh, something uh, hazardous or, or just dangerous in the situation. So um, with that said, um, I, I don't know, there wasn't an explanation of what the request was for. I just... I was just requesting by some commission members to see the job okay. description. So if they got any questions, um, they may, might have time just to look over and they may be some next time. Sure. And, I, and, I, and we are, like he said, we are working to update some of these. Uh, I, I've, I'm working to create a matrix so that somebody comes in the door brand new with no training as a firefighter. He can see his journey all the way through the assistant chief position, uh, years of service, training he needs. So those will change these as requirements for what we want for each position. So that's that's being developed now. So, and you will see in the packet um, it, there's it's a battalion chief then to assistant chief. Um, the deputy chief's positions were all rolled into um, that battalion chief position, and there was rewritten under that standard under that. Um, so technically, the deputy. The deputy chief's positions are, were all archived, so they're not in the system. They're not in the, the program to actually push out uh, right now um, for for those as as we took those three positions, rolled it into one, and has since moved in a fire marshal, those kind of things. So, um, as you know, um, every municipality, city, um, uh, county is in budget time. Um, so, so what I'll, I'll say is we are, we are going through that process um, and being requested uh, to look together. We hope to soon have the um, amount finalized and those kind of things as we go forward. Um, we will bring that most likely next month of our proposal for 2.9 for, for, um, for you to look over. Um, we will try to, I will try to get it to you earlier so that we can, you can have it um, as soon as I get those numbers of what it, the the actual income from last year was um, in, in projections for this year's amounts as we go forward. Um, if you know, uh, they reduced the mill, um, and and so you know a lot of things are changing. Um, so uh, we're we, we just can't say oh it's the same as last year. Um, it's it's going to be more most likely, but at the same time because of inflation and everything, um, you know. We're, we're still working through that um, for budget-wise, um, but we will try to get that to you, so please um, look for that um, before the meeting. Hopefully, um, we'll get authorization to get that out to you and, and, and so you can look over it um, as it is. There is no projection and change of the um, amount to the, in, to the direct aid to the departments at this time. Um, uh, the, the, the change will be in the support. We are, I know, you know, our plan was to add um, some more money into the um, host testing. Uh, last year, the commission chose to third party host test and then that be billed um, to the departments, any extra that we didn't have in the budget. Um, so far, we haven't had to bill. Um, we've been able to, through, through the AirPAC um, replacement plan, and that, that money was rolled directly back into that program. Um, I, I don't have a final because all the packs aren't sold and all of that that kind of rolls in as, as they, they are sold. Um, and so I don't know where that in, impact is for next year yet um, and, and what that total amount is to know. Uh, it was $44,000 to do that um, on a third party. Um, uh, or roughly 40, I, I rounded that number. Um, don't have it right in front of me. Um, so, so next year there's not that much. Every year we're going to try to increase that with that to get that whole amount, but it still may, you know, um, come to that we'll have to look at the departments and say, hey, your portion is $500, your portion is whatever, to cover the difference 
um, in that that fund if we don't have the difference um, of of that captured in the budget. And that's what I have. Okay. Other questions or anything? Uh, we'll move on to uh, Chief Smith. Okay. Um, the uh, one of the handouts I gave you uh, is uh, SOG 204.00 determination of origin and cause. County already had a uh, a policy on fire investigation. Um, this is just updated a little bit. Um, Specifically, trying to ensure that we, we we follow as close to 921 as we can, um, outlining collection of evidence and that kind of thing. We've had a couple instances where we um, didn't collect evidence or possible evidence the right way, so we want to make sure that we outline a um, um, policy on how that needs to be conducted, as well as most departments do a really good job of of either determining the. Uh, origin and cause of the fire, or if 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 not, calling for the battalion or, or the fit team to come and help them with that. Uh, it is the fire department's duty to determine uh, the best they can the origin and cause of the fire. And uh, so this is just a policy to kind of outline that investigation process. Uh, while we're talking about that, I will add a a note that I sent out a email last week, I believe it was, to all the chiefs. Um, and I meant to set a reminder today, but on April the 5th, SLED is coming to headquarters to teach a first responder's role during fire investigations or for fire investigations at headquarters, April 5th at 6 o'clock. There's not a cap on the number of people. Uh, I highly suggested all the chiefs come and chief officers. Uh, I think it'd be a good opportunity to ask some questions um, and, and hear what they got to say. This is by no means a fire investigations class. Um, for the, that they would teach in their two-week class, but it, it, it is hopefully going to outline, you know, some, some important things that first responders need to be aware of on a fire scene, and uh, um, they're going to talk about evidence as well. So uh, make sure you relay that to your departments. Be glad to have everybody there that we can. And all, that is also the, the um, legislative day at Columbia, uh, if, if any of y'all go for that. So... Um, the uh, next policy, 204.01, uh, is the uh, policy for the FIT team and just kind of outlines, uh, we, there's a lot of uh, uh, firefighters in the county, both city and county, that have some uh, good fire investigation training knowledge and uh, skills. So this was just a, a way for people to become part of the FIT team uh, and it kind of outlines some training for each classification of membership on that FIT team. Um, of course, uh, the first part of it, if, if, if members want to become a part of it and they want to go take the basic fire investigation class, now there's a requirement of 10 uh, CFIT trainer classes that are required to even get in the class. So it just kind of outlines um, um, the FIT team membership, and then also gave you an application. Uh, anybody that, that wants to uh, uh, be a part of that team that, that meets the minimum requirements to be a member, uh, more than welcome to apply. And then the last thing I gave you was a um, volunteer application process. So uh, HR now is doing a lot of the paperwork uh, with workers' comp and all that through Paylocity Online. So if you member, or your departments have new members that, that want to join, if they'll fill out the application, the criminal record check, and then the uh, ID data sheet, and send that to um, the uh, Pine Street or uh, to uh, EOC, then uh, they'll get that to HR to start that online paperwork through Paylocity. So these, these forms are really the what, what you need to give the new volunteer, get it filled out. We'll get the background check done. Once that's done, then um, HR will start that process of doing uh, their portion. So a lot of that that's been on paper now is, is paperless through Paylocity. So one of the things, especially when it comes time to incentive, we have a person that's missing one piece of paper. What happens is... We take their email address off of here 
and they get an email from Human Resources and they make that connection and everything is submitted directly to the computer. It doesn't go through our office, it doesn't go through Human Resources, then into the computer, it, it automatically gets loaded and approved to try to help with the pay for shuffle number one and then we have, there's no question that we're out of that human resources piece. That's between the person, the computer, and human resources finishing that, that it's not our, our mistake that we lost a piece of paper, it, it was a shuffle, those kind of things, and some of that paper we don't need to be seeing. Um, it doesn't need to come through our hands. It's just safer that way for uh, the firefighter and, and, and employee as, as it comes in. Questions on that? Yep. Chief, you and I have already had this conversation. This is our background still just South Carolina. If it's not, I mean, is it, is yeah. it so, NCIC background check? So it is not an NCIC background check, but what we have done, so um, the fire Fires Association pays for the South Carolina sled background check. So if you are a firefighter, you automatically go into there. We also have subscribed to a background check service. Um, that we do run background checks um, through that also, which covers the whole gamut um, from every state to anything. And, and a lot of businesses use this. Um, it's actually where I, I drew it from, um, uh, got the information from, so that we can do that. The other reason for that is it's saving us a lot of money because your rescuers um, do not um, get a free background check. They're required to have a background check. Um, uh, from the fire academy, firefighter association. Fire association does pay for that. They, they, yeah, um, they'll get the free one because they're not yeah, firefighters. Right, right. So we can you we use that. That's and and so um, it is not just anymore. Just that's the, the requirement. The fire marshals is just the state. It's just okay. sleep. Yes. You're right. About and, then, that. and that's fine because I mean that, and it leads me to my next question because I've recently been told you know when I call Miss Cindy and she busts her hiney and does everything up there for us and takes care of us. And as for the packets, once you send me what you handed out, uh, when I send it back up, I was told, well, I can do the background on the porch. So wait a minute, you know, and, and like you, you and I have talked, you know, that was your state. And when I got a member to come in that's never lived in the state, lived here three years, you know, he's had a life, a 50-something year life elsewhere, it concerns me. And, 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 if, and if you don't have somebody that pays for a service, that is the as far as we can go. Right. That's the gotcha. thing. Unless your law enforcement has well, got a reason. To do you know, that. and that was the thing is, you know, that we can, what can we do? Because there's got to be ways to go out and check these things. Um, but we do do this in hand. All right. So this came up recently. When I send this packet up there, okay, I was told, okay, put them in the roster. No, I'm not going to put them in the roster until I get the paperwork. Until I'm insured they've completed all their tasks with the county. But we're never notified back, or let back up, in my three months here, we've not been notified back, hey, your person's ready to go. Add them in a roster, start your paperwork, get them a file start. So that is a request that I, I have. I know that rescue, when they go to those meetings, you know, those chiefs were told by that rescue liaison, hey, you know, Bruce Brock's ready to go. And the chief goes back and starts his paperwork. Uh, because I don't want to start a file and, and in some back, background come back and I got to remove it. That's just, you know, that's just a request that I have is okay. can, can the chiefs be notified? Email. Everybody's got department emails or whatever. Just let us know. Hey, Bruce is ready to go now. And, and let you notify that they're working through their paywork, paperwork through Paylocity. That's a, Background check and that they're starting their paperwork. I, I just, I just, you tell me when they do it. Yeah. I mean, you tell yeah. me when, when they're, they're done with Paylocity. Yeah, yeah. They, yes, okay. when, they, when they're done with their paperwork okay. and, and the background comes back and I'm ready to put them in the training or in a, in a suit, let me know. So we'll, we can start that almost immediately. Yes, sir. Um, but what we'll do is uh, I'll talk to Cindy, Mike, Chiefs, and we'll make sure we have a process. Here's the steps. And at this point, we will notify if it be a rescue chief or a fire chief. We'll, we'll, at this point, we will notify you that they're done with that. Um, that, that the reason why I say that is I'm not 100% sure we actually get notified yet when their paylocity is done. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So, so, so question for y'all. You have, you have the access to the state fire marshal or state portal to 
run somebody's background check on sleep. Now, I've been told I have never done it. Okay, but it's, it's not it's not hard. Okay. But but that that's the process for getting somebody on your roster through the fire marshal's office. So okay. even though this is being run. We need to do that as okay. well on your okay. side, and I can help you with that. So, so once I get that yeah. green light from y'all, yeah, because when it mean? comes back, you would ha you would put hire or not hire, yes. and when you hire them, it adds them to your roster. Okay, so I mean that come up, yep. you know, uh, recently where I was talking to somebody and said, "Hey, so this person's ready," and I said, "Okay, what about this person?" Well, I, I don't know anything about that one. Right. You know, you know, they run at the same time. Right. right. And, and understand right. the dog department's touching this stuff. Yep. I, I can help you with that. And then, then you also put them in on the Firefighters Association. Yes. So. With with that piece to talk about the Firefighters Association, um, at one point we asked that Brady be on everyone's roster so that he can manage it for training um, and help the roster. Um, there are a few that he is not on, which doesn't allow him to help with training, doesn't help him to look up training and those kind of things. Um, you know, I would like the support of this commission um, to, to uh, make that a standard that um, the departments do that. Um, in a discussion, it's a good point for that. Um, take it back to your, your groups and say, hey, this is, see what they talk about that. Um, it, it's going to help the application process significantly um, because in some cases they're on other people's rosters. Um, and, and then with their training itself, um, in the application process, we can actually, if he is, you know, um, he's able to. So it's on the fire marshal side, not the firefighter. I'm sorry. The no, the, yeah, I'm sorry. The puts, fire marshal puts side. him on the portal so he can see transcripts and, and, and help with that stuff. Um, they can put him on there through the fire marshal's office, and like his admin, but it shows up like a member. And so if people delete him, then he can't do it. So um, that, that's what he was talking about. Comments about that? That was all I had on my list. I'm sorry. All right. There's nothing else. We'll move on to region one. I'll just get it through this time. Region two. Uh, I don't have anything at this time. Uh, I was not able to attend the last meeting due to work. Uh, I was going to follow up and ask, do you guys have an update on the software selection for the replacement of the ER? So we, we have looked at several vendors um, and um, my mind just went 50 year old blank right there. So I, I missed our demos because I was on shift for both of them unfortunately, right. but um, yeah. Through Clemson, I was able to attend a demo for First Due and ESO Solutions. So, first so First Due is the one that that we really like. Okay. Uh, it it allows for a and, and I hate to use this illustration, but but a, a, a mothership, and then each station would have their own admin rights to their stuff. Right. Uh, if you uploaded a pre plan in your district and um, 13 was toned and CAD, you had a way to get it on a computer. Everybody that was responding to that call could see that pre-plan, the hydrant. So it shares the information, but only through that kind of stuff. So um, each station couldn't mess with the other station stuff. Um, it, it really has a lot of benefits. Uh, it's pricey, uh, but, but uh, it's nowhere near the price of where ESO is going. Uh, and so Clemson is going to it, and, and we really liked the, uh, the presentation that they did. Um, but not not zeroed in yet it, as well. We're trying to prepare for it in the budget. Yes, we, we will be going to it next month at Clemson, I believe. So uh, oh, if you guys oh. want some actual, uh, Definitely. actual feedback, yeah. you can probably get some from them. Okay. Good. Yep. Um, but 
Uh, I love the patient care portal in ESO. I think it's very user friendly, yeah. more, more so than any of the others. But just for the cost, I I couldn't recommend. So ju just just compared to the cost, we currently pay about twenty four thousand dollars for ERS. ESO is going to cost us ninety thousand dollars after three years. So where first due is probably going to be in the neighborhood of fifty four thousand, and then the first year after, for the first year then it would come down to roughly fifty. So it, there's it, it's gone crazy. That's all I have. Region four. All right, so just going to revisit um, page staff. I know it's could have been worked on, but I'm still going to ask. Okay, don't mean no harm, nothing like that. Uh, that's kind of one of the things, you know, in our area down there, departments have been cut as far as the 40 hour people, you know, getting four hours a week of somebody in the station. Uh, I understand it's a work in progress, but we are still concerned. We do still want it. Right, right. Okay, so I just want you to be aware. We, uh, we offered three jobs yesterday, okay. uh, 40 hour positions. Uh, that still leaves us three 40 hour positions open. We're full on 24. Um, so we've got more applications fixing around another assessment. Uh, so hopefully those 40-hour um, employees will, will be full. Uh, when full, it, it, it's two on a truck that, that go between stations. Uh, so each station should see somebody two and a half times, right. two and a half days a week. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and I realize right now you don't have right it. Right now I'm getting a half a day. That's right. On, on that's right. Day. That's right. That's and when right. they're checking the trucks, and that's fine. That's, that's right. good. That's You're right. getting calls. Hey, can I go put fuels in your truck? Yes. And that's that's helpful. That's very helpful. Yes. You know, yes. but, uh, we, you know, not so much that is, you know, call volume. I mean, that recently became uh, apparent to, to me when it, when it kind of hit miles. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when Dad had an episode and there's nobody there to respond. You know, and I wait for somebody from South Union to get me. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I know what it, I understand, man. Right. Right. And y'all yeah. don't, don't run medical calls as far as... Well, we have a couple people that do run medical calls. Yeah. Uh, when we're there. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, right. but if, if we had Brandon there, right. you know, or that 40-hour guy, when we had him, right. you know, we're talking about two minutes from driveway to driveway. Right. You know, versus eight miles, load up a truck, get there. Right. You know, thank goodness it all worked out. Yeah. You know, but however, that was just my house. What if it's somebody else's house? That's right. I mean, That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. It was all look good. That's right. And we're working. We're working hard to get them filled. You know, and and uh, luckily we had three that had training uh, and, and experience that we can put to work quickly once they get through the whole process. And it takes a while to get through the process at HR and physicals and and all of that stuff. Uh, we did have one one more that that wants a job. But has no training in the the next academy uh, cadet class is in August, so you know we we really don't have anything for him to do right now. So, uh, but we do have more applicants that we're fixing to run another assessment on, and hopefully we can get these things filled pretty quick. Uh, I think the last thing which I I don't get wrong, but last time I you know I questioned about physicals, and you and I've had that conversation. You know I support it 100 percent. Want to see it work and see it grow. Uh, one of the questions I asked last time was if somebody chooses to go to their personal doctor. Uh, and before I start that, let me say this. If I can help you anyway in your process of doing, revamping this whole uh, process, please reach out to me. I'm stretched about as thin as I can stretch, but I'll find five minutes for you. Okay. Um, but I ask, hey, is there any way to put down you know, what is required with these physicals? And, and, of course, the answer was, well, it's 100 pages. you got to decide, decide for this, that it's not. You know, so with my limited knowledge, and I get that. I understand that. With my limited knowledge, I've Googled it and pulled up, you know, NFPA 1582, and lo and behold, the bullet points that say you need a blood analysis, a urinalysis, pulmonary function test, a chest x-ray every five years, EKG, infectious disease screening, cancer screening, Autometric exam and a vision test. Right. So that's kind of a shortcut. I know it's it, deeper it than that. Oh, yeah. Okay, but that's a shortcut of what's required. That's right. So instead of getting just a cover sheet of a physical back, this says, hey, he's required. At least these doctors know this is what's required for you to sign. 
So, and so what I've been doing since our last meeting is I've been digging heavy in 1582 and I'm trying to create a form for y'all to be able to see uh, as we go through this process. And if, and if you're willing to, to, to help me with that, I'd appreciate it. But I'm making a double column and I'm like seven pages because of all the things in 1582 that it lists that disqualifies somebody from being a firefighter. Yeah, those tests are required, but it's all those things that if you have this, you can't be a firefighter. If you have this, you can't be. A, if you take this, you can't be. A and I'm hoping that somehow we don't go full fledged, eleven fifty two. Right. Because also looking at this, it says yeah, you got to have a strength test. You got to have a, a leg strength test. That's you got to take a PT test. Right. We think you should have County County. That's right. right. That's right. If we but, go full fledged, but, 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 you're right. But at the end of the day, Oconee County is liable for all those people that go to that fire scene. And and so we can allow people to go that have certain conditions. Oh, I agree. Uh, and and I agree. so yeah, you're right. We, maybe we need to find some 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 where to meet. Yeah. But but 1582 is what you go by, um, in, in OSHA. And so when something does happen, that's what that's what the attorneys are going to have in their hand. This is a guide for you to go by, and you chose not to. So I'm just I'm trying to get all the information no, no, no. before we talk. You I know. get you. I get you because we're also going to have. Well, this is what the doctor said he's physically able to do. That's right. You That's know? Right. So, and, and there's a portion of 1582 that says think, some of this can be done by another doctor, but it has, it's supposed to go back to the fire department physician for final approval. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a question, you know, that's come up in me talking to my department and, and my, my region down there. If you've got somebody, let's say I have a heart issue, and I go to cardiologist, my cardiologist says, okay, we know you've got this. We know you're going to get flagged. Every year when you go to your physical, okay. But I'm. It's, it's not a problem. I want to see you every two years. Right. How how do we address that? If the if the specialist says, you know, that he's good, he's doing every other years. Can we write something in the in that thing? Because we know the doctor's going to like. So so there's something in FPA. Eight, uh, 1582 that says if you're this age and you've had this, then you should have this every year or this every two years or whatever. So okay. it, it's got those guidelines okay. in there, and I'm trying to get it all together so that we can truly evaluate it. 1582 would be hard for us to, to go by directly. That's right. but, but I think we would be not do, being good stewards of the county if we turned a blind eye and just let somebody take a sheet to their doctor friend and say, I need you to sign that so I can continue being a firefighter. And, and and if we have people doing that and they don't need to be firefighters, yeah, they may get run off. Yeah. But but they are a liability to the county. Yeah. So, hey, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, I'm not going to be popular for this, but if, if I've got to ride a bike, then everybody up here can ride a bike. That's right. Okay, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Right. You know, because I personally believe that in all the years that, that we've been doing this, you know, A, for an auto patrol doing these things, which no longer require them, Okay, um, to to my job now, I believe in it. it what Oconee County has done is actually probably caught something that saved somebody's okay. life. Every somewhere, absolutely. We we can't share medical stuff, but I can every year during our physicals we will get a report that we caught something that was a life ending ending issue. Okay, I mean every yep. single year. There's at least one, and, and and sometimes it's more than that, and we catch it now, and, and a lot of times they can be fixed, and they're back, and and I know I, I look thinking of two people right now that they are they are back doing what they love to do because we caught it on a physical we didn't catch it when there was no one to help them. And, and you and I can talk later, so I don't take no more of these guys' time. Right. Right. But I mean, you know, that's that's something okay. that you know this this one right here was mine. Yep. And it's signed the day of. Well, if there's a, a problem there, you know, something that you looked at is give me time to go to my specialist mm -hmm. to see if it's really as bad as and, what. And, and, and truly what they what they should do is if, if something's not right and they send you to the specialist, the specialist sends paperwork back to the doctor Absolutely. to sign off on I, yes or no. I mean, that's what I do now. Yes, yes. You know, but I will go one further and say that the company provides me with a piece of paper that says, here, take this, you know, what is it, what I call it, the... Uh, audio meter exam paperwork yeah. that I filled out. Yeah. Show me your curve. Yeah. You know, let's not just check the tone, but let's check all this stuff. And, yeah. and you know, yeah. I, I get it because yeah. that kind of test is a lot better than yeah. standing behind me in a, a day room at a fire department going. But, but it also, you know, it all, it's also important for us to have the right doctor that knows NFPA that says, hey, 
these are the guidelines and, and send those people and not just a doctor that goes, well, he can't hear, I'm not passing him. You know what I'm saying? Are so looking at that, 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 Well, that, that's all part of this whole discussion. Okay. You know, so if, if Upstate Medical is our doctor, or North Greenville is our doctor, then then and then that's what the county decides to do. Um, that's what the FDA says. We should have a physician for the fire department. Um, then that would be where everybody would have to go. Would there be a problem with taking our package from North Greenville and having them go to the Oak County doctor? So, doc so technically how it's done now is those are our two doctors. Okay. We choose to go to North Greenville as a doctor or upstate medical as a doctor um those are the two doctors that we've chosen to clear um a firefighter and as the doctor will say at that moment you know the second he walks out yes right here we believe he, he's good um so so no we're not looking at getting a individual doctor outside of those but those are our two our two doctors that we've chosen to go so people have two options the one stop that we do with, with North Greenville and then uh, upstate that you have to go in early for your blood draw and then do your um, and then do your physical stress test. But we are looking at, like me personally, I'm getting to that point, got these readers on, I'm going to start going to an eye doctor annually. I've got to go to a hearing specialist annually. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I may have to go to a cardiologist annually. Can those, my doctors, fill out those parts of their form to provide to your doctor? Will you accept that? I think we have to ask the doctor that. I would accept that if well, that I stuff mean, went to your went to the doctor. I would accept. I would accept that. My but, job currently, when I got flagged for hearing, mm -hmm. they sent me the form and told me to go to my doctor. I sent it back to the marshal's doctor. The marshal's doctor signs off. That's right. It. Correct. That's right. You know, that's all I'm asking. That's right. And and and, and 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 I think you're, the answer to that question is yes. But you got to go. You would have to go every year to our doctor to get your physical, and then when that gets flagged, you would go see your doctor, make sure it's not getting worse. Let's say it's a cardiac issue. You go to your cardiologist. But if we're going to send it to that doctor anyway, why? What do you mean? If I'm going to go get our packet filled out, part over here by a specialist, part over there by a specialist, put the packet so, together. So all you're going to your cardiologist for is your heart. You're not going over there for the work and all that but stuff. But if I got my cardiologist paperwork in there, and I've got my hearing in there, I see what and you're I saying. got my oh, vision I see, in right, there, I see what you're and saying. I take your packet I see and give it saying. to your doctor I see what you're saying. with that all my doctor's signatures right, on it. Right. That would be up to the doctor, yes. Okay. That would be. I see what you're saying now. I, I think that's a coordination. And, I mean, ultimately... It's done after the fact for North Greenville now, but I think that's just something we just had a recent one where a person came in with the authorization to take the stress test from his cardiologist, and normally they would have said no. Okay. Um, so I, I think it's a coordination thing that we're going to need to work through, but I mean, I don't see a problem with that at all. We just have to make sure that that's what that North Greenville or Upstate wants to see in that example um, if they already know they're going to have to have right. it. Like, like they, last year, they last year on mine, you know, I just had the whole, you know, marshal service thing done, and I got flagged on a couple of things. So I had my paperwork. You know, I went and I said, look, I'm going to fill you here to this, straight up, but I've got this. Will you take that? I'll take your test. Right. But will you take this? And she's like, yeah, sure. Puts it in there. I didn't take her test. And when I go to the doctor, he says, okay, you're good to go. Right. Right. But I mean, that That's, was his right. decision. That, that makes sense. But now, if somebody didn't have a problem, didn't know they had a problem, right. and then you get sent out to be tested, yeah, yeah I, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. We'll talk. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm to take these guys' time. Okay. <laughs> Thank y'all. Any? Uh, let's see here. Region 5. Uh, just a couple of things. I'm looking back through my notes here. Um, I had a question about the first responder awards. Do those news releases get put out to the paper and all that stuff to recognize those? Do, do you know, they were just asking the process on that. So yes, um, the pictures in, in the uh, press release is, is generally done. I know we posted it on Facebook and, and get it out to the social media side. Um, but yes, that is generally done uh, to the paper if they pick it up or what. Okay. I 
had some physical stuff, but Bruce covered that. So we're, <laughs> we're good with that. We all know that's a working process, so no need to read over that. Um, I guess just a reminder, I know it's spring fever, but um, make sure you meet with your chiefs, your departments, and talk to them. I've been guilty of not doing that, so just a friendly reminder to make sure you call them, meet with them, talk to them um, before and after the commission meetings. Um, it would be helpful. It's something i got to work on myself. Um, uh, we amended the agenda to add uh, discussion of the secretary appointment. Uh, Mr. Zahn has indicated to me that he is stepping down. He's got so many irons in the fire that he's got to give stuff up. And unfortunately, this was one of them. So first, I want to appreciate all the hard work that you've done. We've set off an alarm somewhere. Um, that's the burglar. That's not the fire. So we don't have to evacuate. Maybe we should just close the doors. Yeah. Um, but I do appreciate Mr. Zahn's, uh, all his work. He's in support. He's given the commission. Always been a fixture in the fire service. I've been back, what, nine years, and so you've always done a lot. But uh, you'll still be doing other things. It's just that he's decided to step down, so we do need somebody to take over the secretarial duties um, for the fire commission. Either one of us, or um, I'm not going to say us, one of y'all can do it. Or, um, <laughs> and remember, we, we, it's we can, recorded, so you just you can get it on the... Well, we can get it on like that or have someone else. Uh, if y'all want to appoint someone or talk to somebody in your department if they want to do it, uh, they can come back and watch the video uh, and do the minutes. So um, we do need to bring that up. I don't know necessarily we have to have a decision tonight, but we do need to have something in place that we can act on by next meeting. So um, if one of y'all are interested in it, uh, we can take it and run with it. If, if you want to come back and you know say, I know so-and-so, they expressed interest in doing it, we can do that. So. I'll just be thinking about that. Uh, the second part, and I guess I failed. I know in the past there's been a liaison between the Fire Chiefs Association and the Fire Commission. Um, I, I had I wrongly assumed that Mr. Zahn was handling that, so I would like for somebody on the commission in itself to be a liaison, that preferably a chief officer that goes to the chief's meetings that, uh, that can be a conduit back and forth between the two organizations. If someone wants to or will nominate somebody or um, so Mr. Brock's chief, isn't he? Yes, I, I'm gonna say I, I'll take it and if okay. it don't work then y'all fire me and we'll go from there, okay? But I I, I do the best I can with okay. what I got. Motion we nominate him. Okay. <laughs> Whatever we need Second. to do. Second that one. Second that and if you're in agreement we'll just go ahead and appoint you the liaison between the two organizations. I think that'll be great. And appreciate you stepping in to do that. So. Uh, uh, outside of that, that's all I've got. Uh, unless there's anything else for the good of the order. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to second. Adjourn. All in favor? Thank you.